Welcome. This is a little introduction about diversity and inclusion. When, what does it have to do with Drupal? Um, this is me. I am Lucy. Um, I use he, him pronouns. I even put them in my thing. That was a nice Drupal thing that I saw here. We could add our stickers with pronouns. Um, I'm a backend developer in Drupal. Uh, most is usually uh, works with training in Drupal with a uh, Drupal competence office in the CINT company. And I brought a meme to tell you about who I am. Usually with people from the LGBTQ community, I can actually tell them that I'm non-binary, I'm gender fluid, I'm pan-romantic, I'm ace, more like Demi, probably with a third label underneath that I haven't figured it out yet. But for cisgender and straight people, I'm just like, I'm trans and I'm a man and I'm gay. Let's keep it simple, <laughs> just like that. Um, talking about definitions, I've brought a couple that I want to tell you about is, first of all, diversity. Diversity is a range of many people or things that are very different from each other. It's just a variety of people, variety of backgrounds, variety of ideas. That's basically it. Equity, that's the whole new world that have been talking about with the diversity and inclusion recently, diversity, equity, and inclusion, is a situation in which everyone is treated equally. Just be fair. That's the best synonym. Fairness. Let's be fair with everyone. And inclusion. Um, I usually focus more on the verb or like to be included or actions like in, not um, so to be included and someone being included. Another concept that I want to bring, I forgot to put on the slides, it's about underrepresented groups. I will be using this term a lot. People used to use the term minorities, but when we think about the definition of the word, how it works with numbers, it's a group with the less number is a minority. But when we think about real life, um, bringing up a recent example, uh, I took a flight to JFK first and then here because there is no international uh, airport in Pittsburgh. <laughs> And I realized at some point in um, the GFK airport that from everyone that I talked to, and I've been to um, immigration, and then check-in, and then security, and then boarding again, and I stopped at a store in the middle of the time because, come on, I needed a chocolate after all, night, hour, night hours flight. Um, from every all of those spots that I stopped at and talked to people, I've met like one probably white guy, one. So why everyone else is a minority? That doesn't make sense. So underrepresented groups, that's a little bit better. Thinking about what we can do and what is a good thing with diversity. What we can do and what we need to do when we think about um, diversity is that we need to provide these people so they can be included, right? We need to do stuff because when we think about um, privileges and stuff, these people are not being included, that's why they're underrepresented groups. One thing that we need to consider is that they're not very complicated things most of the time. I require only one thing. I want people to use my pronouns correctly. It wasn't supposed to be that hard. <laughs> Maybe I have a colleague that requires us to talk on Zoom looking to the camera so he can read our lips to support his hearing aid it wasn't to be that hard. Or maybe have like a keyboard, a specific keyboard. I don't know, we need to talk to people, see what they need, and provide it. Another concept here is that um, different situations require different needs. In my home country, I am uh, the majority of population when considered color. I am white there. But if I would ever move here, I would be considered Latino, I would be an immigrant. So it depends on the context. The most common example actually would be when we think about working from home and working on an office with people with disabilities. But it could also mean that I would require people to use pronouns with me too, or have a tag for everyone. So I would know everyone's pronouns and they would know mine. It depends of the situation. And when we think about okay, that's a hustle, that's complicated, so why would I do that? 
because diversity brings you better projects. It is well known, there is even uh, Oxford, um, sorry, there is even a study that is linked here, it's gonna be in the references at the end of it, that is why does diversity actually bring us better projects? Because when we have a team that is diverse, it will put their own thoughts and their own backstories and their own histories in there, and it will reach more people when this project is done. So my product will have all of my ideas and all of my colleagues' ideas and everyone's ideas in it. And then people that are like them will enjoy this project because they have same backgrounds. So, when, so then we can reach more people, a broader audience, when we have a broader team developing that. I also hear a lot of um, people, recruiters and stuff, saying, oh, I wanted to bring diversity, but I can't find them anywhere. I can't find them with the same standards that the people that I'm looking for. And then I ask, have you ever thought why? Why, oops, sorry, why diverse people, it's not as found in the pool to be hired? The reason is because they didn't have the same opportunities in life to learn. Many people are, were kicked out of their houses, many people had to work from early life, many people um, had to live with relatives and friends because of that. Many people suffered too much bullying to even finish high school. So how are they gonna be able to find the job with the more complex um, requirements if they had no opportunity to finish high school? The thing is, and that's my biggest tip here, is there are organizations that focus on those people. They teach, sometimes they teach them to sue, sometimes they teach them to cook, sometimes they teach them to program. I was actually trained by one of those institutions. Uh, it's a non-profit, a non-government um, organization. The thir first one, it's Educa Transforma. The name kind of jokes with trans people and transformation, education and transformation. But I also met people um, or heard of um, Indique Uma Preta, that's the second one. The translation would be something like nominate a black woman. There is also Maria Lab, and they are all from my home country. But I also met people from Upskill, that is a training for women in, I think, Portugal. And there is also Laboratório. And I do believe that we can find those organizations in our own home country, in our own state, in our own city, in the one, our own, I don't know, close to where we work, close to our companies. And hiring people that were trained by those organizations, it would be actually a quite advantage for us. Because first of all, we know they are freshly trained in programming. And then those people are so hardworking that they are probably learning in those organizations while they're still working. Because come on, we have to live, so we have to skip working. And they are so willing to do a good job because this is the opportunity that they never had. So they will give them their all. And it's a good advantage for the company because not only they're hardworking, they will be bringing that diversity that we haven't found anywhere else. Uh, in CINT, I have a couple of suggestions and ideas that we used, and I'm gonna link the, um, we have a report from 2021 and 2022 of the things that we've done. Um, it's gonna be on the references. But these are just ideas to inspire you. It's not a solution because I don't have any solutions to how to fix diversity and inclusion. So a couple of suggestions. We do have boot camps. We train people in Drupal, we train to people in Java, we train them in mobile. So we try to hire people specifically to train in the technologies that we need. We also have um, Young Apprentice. This is actually structured by law, we have to hire people from a, a specific range of age to offer them their first opportunity of work. But we've tried to focus on a partnership to support a vulnerable background people. So we not only give them their first job opportunity, but we offer this to people that need it most. And we also have an internship. There's a program called Next Gym. Um, 
something else that I hear a bit in people saying is that, oh, I do hire and then I train and then they leave for some other company. So what do I do? First of all, what the CING does is that we focus on the retention of everyone. So we don't focus in any specific groups, we are just trying to retain everyone. Everyone is precious. Everyone is doing their good job. Everyone has been there, so let's keep them there. Um, some of those um, retention plans are actually just trying to take care of people. So we have an English Boost program. We are not uh, speakers in English, so we have to learn, so we have to train, so we can actually reach our own clients better. And this is something that will help them in their lives so they can actually enjoy more stuff and maybe, I don't know, travel to Pittsburgh. That's an idea. <laughs> Um, we also have uh, environment and social governments department that focus on bringing good stuff for everyone and focused on specific needs from diversity and inclusion group, uh, underrepresented groups. One of my regular meets, I was like every three months I have a meet with someone from ESG and we just talk about everything. Um, he gives me support, he takes, um, he answers questions that I have. And then we talk about silly things like, oh, I'm excited for my ballet dance in Saturday. It's just connection. And it's someone that's looking out for me. Um, the real thing about the retention here is that is the consequences of all the work done in the company. Focusing on diversity and inclusion to be sure that everyone is well and everyone is fine and focus on the full company. So it's just really a reflection of the work of everything else. We do have a little bit of focus on retention for um, like giving benefits and partnerships with other companies that will give us, I don't know, tickets for a nice restaurant or improvement in your healthcare, which is quite good. But they're not very focused on diversity and inclusion. Um, one thing that a colleague said that I think it's a reflection too is CIMT is a safe place to be yourself, both in terms of people with disability and sexuality. And I thought that was very touching for me because he's not part of neither of those um, classifications. He's not in underrepresented groups in any of those two definitions, but he still see that the company cares. It's not just for like us, it's for all of us. Another uh, example of that is that we have affinity and action groups. Affinity and action groups are two kind of groups in like chat and uh, we have like workplace, like Facebook kind of thing, where we can just group to with people that are just like us and no matter what kind of just like us we are. We have action groups that actually can do stuff in the company. So one of them is the uh, Ubuntu group that is focused on black people. We also have a trans group, which is amazing and I felt so welcome in the first week that I found out. We also have affinity groups that are just like LGBT community as a thing. They don't usually, ha they don't need to have great actions, but we can just talk about everything that bother us. So it's that feeling of being included is quite uh, important. Another thing that we have is the CIMT University where we can, we have courses about pretty much anything that the company works with. You can find the course right there with uh, paths and videos and whatever. We also have inside of it the diversion and inclusion course. In my department, it's kind of mandatory. Everyone has to do, but it's not mandatory for a company. It's optional. You can just go and watch and see. And it was made by all the groups, the underrepresented groups. It was not made by just a little bit of people from the university. It was made by every action group. We also have a We Learn that is just a program we can um, ask for a refund if we buy a book that is relevant for study or a course or a certification. So just improving everyone's life. And we also have Architecture Academy focused on sometimes groups like the Ubuntu group was the very first one that had the Academy Architecture. And then we have the woman one and then we have for different departments. So we know that we don't have to be stuck on the very first level of the ladder of success. We can work together to grow. 
what all of that has to do with Drupal? Because after all, this is a Drupal con. <laughs> One thing that we've learned is that we don't have a lot of developers to hire in Drupal. Even when we find them, they're mostly focused on uh, the interface and not much on developing code kind of thing. So we would have to hire them and train them. And that's the catch. We can hire diversity, diversity people for the training. And we can't focus on hire people in their first uh, experience. We do focus also in updating the training, considering accessibility and diversity and inclusion and everything. And we will teach them not only Drupal, but everything that's around that, like Composer, like we use Docker, and like Git. Uh, we use Lando. And we also teach them human skills. It's usually their first job opportunity. It doesn't have to be, but we try to, to focus on these people. So we try to teach them like responsibility. Be on the daily at 10 a.m., please. Be awake. You can grab your coffee, but just be awake. <laughs> and one of the advantages and kind of our motto is that they develop people and these people give back to the community. And I'm not talking about Drupal community in this specific case. I'm talking about their own lives, the people around them. If they become better people because they have a stable job and they're finally safe, they will be making this to everyone else around them. They will be a model for people that are around them, that they can grow and that they can break status quo and go beyond. One of the biggest advantages is that Drupal is welcoming to these people. We are not afraid to send our trainees to the open queue, um, to the issue queue. We are not afraid to send them, go talk to the maintainer on Slack. Like, ask your doubt. Go ask them, go talk to them, go do stuff. Go develop yourself and grow. Because we know that Drupal is focused on accessibility and in diversity. We are not afraid of Drupal. One actual thing that um, my boss was talking to me and I thought was quite interesting to bring is about psychological safety. Giving a stable, decent, regular job, which pays for your food and pays for your house, will give you a kind of stability. If you have this job with where you can be yourself, when you can be comfortable being yourself and using your name tags or using your, I don't know, evil t-shirts, <laughs> um, is just giving you the basics of inclusion here, inclusion safety. When you have a place where you can actually grow and learn and develop and take and have questions, then you have the learner safety. You are safe to learn, you're safe to grow. And that's something that Drupal gives us. When you have a place where you can create something and be proud of your, what you're doing, or like maybe being proud of being to Pittsburgh and the DrupalCon, <laughs> you're bringing value to everyone around you, and that's a contributor safety. Um, and in this case, it's not only for the community when you're giving, uh, working on issues or making a module and stuff, but it's also when we're sending the trainees to work on projects and working on clients. They are creating value for everyone around. And when you have a company and you have an environment that makes you so comfortable that you can challenge the status quo, and you can go and ask why we don't have more trans people in the company. We can ask that. Then you have the challenger safety. That's the most comfortable you can be somewhere. And actually, I can quest, um, have a couple questions in Slack, and people will answer me. So thanks, Drupal Slack, for that. <laughs> uh, last point that I wanted to bring is that Everything about diversity, it's never set on stone. I don't bring answers because we have to be always learning. That's why I just bring tips, suggestions, pointers, because I know that tomorrow I will figure out something new that I need to be attentive in, in diversity and inclusion. For example, um, I've learned this year, so I haven't figured out yet how to put it on my training, how to consider that on my training, about cognitive ability. A cognitive ability is kind of like when you're exhausted 
when you get so exhausting doing a task. This is the very simplest way to think about that, okay? Don't take my word as a uh, total rule. But I haven't figured out how to consider that on my training. Is my training exhaustive? I don't know. I have to figure it out. And that made me realize that I don't know what other underrepresented groups are there. They haven't figured it out about how I can adapt to them. We have to be always attentive, we have to be always learning, and we have to be always listening. Eventually, I will be uh, with a trainee that have some specific thing that they require, and I'll be open to them. Here are the references, uh, if anyone wants to take pictures, but they will be probably on the recording after, so be comfortable. And questions? Any questions? Sure, references. I have the references for the Oxford definitions. I have for the, our reports on ESG. And the psychological safety is also there. That's it. I think I went too far. Go ahead. People with disabilities. PWD goes for people with disabilities. Uh, any other questions, concerns, suggestions? I'm also open for suggestions. So that's it, I guess. Uh, question, go ahead. Okay, um, so uh, questioning is about my company and myself. I am from Brazil, and my company is CINT. Uh, we work with different clients, um, building websites, maintaining websites, sometimes with Drupal, sometimes without. So it's quite a broad um, company. We have like more than 6,000? 6,000. 6,000 yeah. employees from across the globe. Most of them are from Brazil, but we also have people from Europe, from Japan, from Australia, from, well, from here, from the United States. Uh, we had a couple of workers from Nigeria and from Colombia that we trained too. So um, this is some important part. We uh, had to be able to provide all the training in English and hire people that knew English. Um, I don't know what else can I tell about. <laughs> Uh, our company focused on providing the service for clients. My department is focused on Drupal, and inside of the Drupal uh, ideas, the competence office, we train people and we provide other services for the company in Drupal. It's just more like a consequences of the lack of uh, Drupal developers that we found that we trained them. And, um, our training takes around like three months. So one and a half is with just videos and take your own time doing your study. But we keep um, update of how they are doing every day. So we talk to them every day, take questions and everything, and we uh, accompany them in the first part. And then they have like a little project. So they have to build a module in the first part, and they have to build a website as a group in the second part, and then they go for a contribution. So we have like the, a little bit of everything on the training, and then they go for projects with clients and stuff. Okay. Any other concerns? Or that's it? You're all free, Arby. <laughs> Thank you.